Do you guys know I just have their belt buckle that they would wear for like seven years and even still today? If you guys would ever want a video on the Common Rider Girls fan club that was very ill-fated, let me know. I would love to make a video. I have a lot of stuff from that. So I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. If you haven't seen my past two videos on Common Rider Girls, check them out. They'll be in the description. They'll be in a card above. I talked about Common Rider Girls. I have a large collection of their music that dates all the way back to 2014. And I'm essentially going through their entire history, right? Because I want to educate people <laughs> and inform people about this group, things they may not have known. Just a little interesting tidbit because again, they were my favorite band for a long time and I followed them all the time. So I have a lot of information that I love to share. We went over the wizard era and the gaim era of Common Rider Girls in the last two videos. And now we're going over the super best era, which is the one that I have the most nostalgia for. When this was released, I was just getting into the group. It was just a really exciting time. There's a lot of fun things that happened and a lot of sort of bittersweet things that happened as well. I wanna go over all of it. Today, we're talking about the super best era of Common Rider Girls. For those of you who don't know, Common Rider has a toy line known as Super Vest, where it's essentially just belts that were released before, but repackaged with newer things, or rather just repackaged with more stuff. For instance, the Double Driver from Kamen Rider Double, released as the Double Driver with the Cyclone and Joker Gaia Memories. When it was re-released as the Super Best version, it was the exact same belt, but now it had the Cyclone, Joker, Heat, Metal, Luna Trigger, it had all of those Gaia Memories in the box. Now, as of recently, Super Best has been doing things where it's just the belt repackaged and nothing else is added, which is very strange, but at least back then, it used to be that. It would be the belt and then just newer stuff. In the same vein, in 2015, the Common Rider Girls released a compilation album titled Super Best with that exact same concept in mind. It's a compilation album with all of their greatest hits and one new song, depending on which version you got, which there were two versions. And of course, you know me, you know I got all, you know I got both of them. Come on now. But we are going to go over them right now. It's genius, honestly. So this is the CD only version of Common Rider Girls super best this cover is so so pretty the blue sort of gradient background that gets like more dark as it goes out all the girls just all around the cover their riders right next to them it's so pretty it like it, it's kind of saturated but it also pops too i think the riders help the colors to pop a lot more it's so so cool this is one of my favorite album covers just because of how it was it was composition. As you can see, they are wearing new outfits. These are the super best outfits specifically, and they all look really, really nice. The track listing for super best, this is a double album, by the way. So the track listing on the first disc is Let's Go Rider Kick 2011, Koi No Rider Kick, Heart No Henshin Belt, Common Rider V3, LOL, Saite, OK All Right, Last Engage, Mystic Liquid, Just The Beginning, Play For Tomorrow, Alteration, Girls Anthem With Our Big Love, Mr. Notice and Prisoner. Jumping to the second disc, we get Go Get Em, Shock Shocker Shockest, Missing Piece, EXA Exciting by Attitude, Reckless World, Toki no Hana, Mission Complete, Exploded, Break the Shell, Scarlet Savage, and Zuto Zuto. Now Zuto Zuto is a bonus track, essentially. It doesn't list it as a bonus track, but it basically is a bonus track. This is a song that was never released in any other form. It was made specifically for Super Best. I don't remember if it was written by Calorie or not, but it's a nice song. It's kind of like a ballad, kind of, sort of, and it's just a nice, sweet song. I prefer the, the bonus track that comes on the DVD version, which we'll get into in a second, but Zuto Zuto is perfectly fine. And again, I just, I love this concept. The way it was put together is genius. Anytime someone would tell me like they wanted to get into Common Rider Girls and they didn't know where to start, they didn't know what album to pick up, they didn't like, what's their best album? A lot of the time I would say Alteration, but most of the time I would say Super Best because this literally has every song that you could possibly want from Common Rider Girls and even just like a few obscure tracks as well. I mean like the entire Wizard era essentially is on here. You got Last Engage, Ma Mystic Liquid, Just the Beginning, Alteration, Go Get Em, Missing Piece is on here. Also, this is uh, the first time Missing Piece is on a Common Rider Girls specific release. It was only on the Wizard music collection beforehand. And this is the only way you can get Missing Piece on a Common Rider Girls record. It was never on anything else. And I think that's very, very strange. All the hard hitters are here. And even songs like Mr. Notice and Prisoner, which were kind of just sort of duet 
sort of songs from Alteration that you wouldn't expect are thrown on here. Now I don't think there's that many tracks from Exploded, which I think is kind of funny. You have Mission Complete, Exploded. Reckless World is not really an Exploded track, it came out on, on the EXA single, but you know, there's like barely any Exploded tracks on here, which doesn't necessarily surprise me. I said in the last video that I don't believe the Exploded tracks hold as much weight as Alteration did. They didn't bring as much to the table in my opinion. Not that it is a bad album, but the, the tracks leave a little bit to be desired. So it, it, it doesn't surprise me that not that many tracks from Exploded are on here. Meanwhile, almost the entire Alteration album is featured on this a little wild to me. Like if you're getting Super Best, you're basically getting Alteration. So the CD only version has this. This is the cover, of course. It's just the standard cover. If you open it up, you can see there is the first disc and then the second disc and on the back it has the girls with their hands together which is really really nice and it also comes with a photo book now both versions come with a photo book but this one has a different cover so you see the cover on this one is essentially the album cover just without the writers um, which i think is kind of cool common writer girls and it has like all the names of the members at the time now each of these pages has a solo shot of one of the girls and some words by them about what it's been like to be part of the group. It has their signature and like a little drawing as well. You got, er uh, sorry, he told me, and then you got now right here. So it just goes through all of them, which I think is really cool. You got Chisato, and it's just a nice little thing to, to go through. Now, uh, here's a, a wide shot of all the girls with their super best outfits on and their drivers, uh, which I think is very significant, uh, and I'll get to that in a second. I just think super best definitely marked a point in time that things were really going to change for the group. You got Jenna, you got Mitsuki right here, Kaori, I love her hairstyle here. So sick. And on the last page, you have Erica. So just a nice photo book, kind of rare now, I believe. I, I think a lot of releases now, since it's been so long, they don't come with like the slip case and the, the photo book anymore. So if you have these, woohoo. <laughs> All right, Hopper, you gotta sit down here now. Now we get into the DVD version. Now I, love this version. Like I said, this was around the time I was getting into Kamen Rider Girls, and at the time I was in high school. I think I was in freshman year, I believe. No, I was not. I'm sorry. I was in middle school when this came out. So I ordered this through Sal Shipping. Don't ever do that. Don't ever order through Sal Shipping, because basically what that means is they send it not by a plane. They send it on a boat, and that boat doesn't take off until that boat is filled up with everyone else's packages. So it could take a long time. There's no tracking number. And the estimated delivery time is usually at the most six weeks. And like I said, there's no tracking number. So like every single day I would check the mailbox. And when every day it wasn't there, I would play the play for tomorrow music video because it just made me really upset. I literally thought my package was lost. So this album holds a lot of uh, weight to me. It's a strong piece of my heart and I, I, I treasure it very dearly. I went ahead and took the whole thing out of the slipcase. This is the cover for the DVD version. Now, I like the cover for the CD only version a little bit better. I feel like having the writers on there helps it to pop a bit more, as I've said before with other releases, but this is still a beautiful cover. You got all the members there segmented. You got their writer belts, the super best outfits. They all look really cool. And it's just a, a, like a nice compilation, or sorry, composition. It's a very nice composition. Very, very neat. On the back, you got the track listing and the girls giving peace signs in a circle, which is something that they used to do a lot and you've got the double album track listing. Now on the bottom, you've got a DVD and it shows like everything that's in here. I love this DVD a lot. It's so much fun. So around this time, they were going to Thailand and doing like Comic-Con and they were doing performances abroad and just promoting Kamen Rider. And again, just doing things in Thailand. And of course they filmed that, you know, they did concerts. So one of these items on the DVD is a, it's called Making in Thailand. It's basically a behind the scenes video of them going through Thailand and, and experiencing Thailand. and doing these interviews, these podcast type things, and talking about Common Rider, and it ends with a concert, like a, a very cut up, just like, it, it's a segmented concert that has like short bits of the different songs they performed. I think it's kind of interesting when you listen to the Making in Thailand concert section of the video, you can see they clearly layered over the actual studio tracks over top of the performance, so they, they're not actually singing live on the video, they were in the concert, and I believe the concert you can actually find on YouTube by itself without the making of like high quality cameras cameras that they had filming it. Just on the super best version of this concert, it's like, it's almost like they're lip syncing, which I think is funny. Now, outside of that, you get what are called missions for every single member. That's Shisato, Jenna, Mitsuki, Kaori, Erika, Hitomi. Now they all have 
what are called missions where they went through Thailand and were essentially given like a side quest. They were going to do like some interesting thing. Jenna went fishing and that was her entire video. I think hers was the one I watched the least growing up because I just, I, I didn't find it interesting at all. All she did was go fishing <laughs> in like the same spot too. Mitsuki did stuff. She ate spicy food. Oh, 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 it's uh, hot, hot, spicy. Chisato went to like some temple and was, was doing stuff. Erica had yoga. Cowries is really funny to me because she went to some place where there were a lot of tourists. And there's a part where this guy comes in and he's from Chile and he speaks English. And you can tell she's like not scared, but just kind of startled because he just starts speaking English. And he's like, hey, uh, you know where Chile is? Tokyo. Yes, Tokyo. Yes, Tokyo. Tokyo. You know where is Chile? Chile. Chile. South America. South America. <laughs> and there's a part where she's like, okay. <laughs> she's like, all right, that's enough. Chile in the Pacific Ocean. Okay. And he's such a sweet, like nice man. But the way he came in, it, you, it would startle anybody, you know, especially if he didn't speak his language. It's just, it's such a wholesome thing to include on the DVD, especially for something that's not specifically Common Rider. It's Common Rider music, but it's also just the group being themselves. So just having that and seeing like them just having fun by themselves, I think it was a really nice touch to add as a DVD exclusive instead of just having because they very much could have just compiled every single music video put it on this thing you know that like they did with alteration but they decided to do something different and i appreciate that a lot now the last two things that this comes with are the the full-size music video for break the shell which i think was also on the exploded album i believe yes i think it was you get break the shell but then you also get the music video for believe in my flesh th which is a song that's included only on the dvd version of super best uh the dvd version doesn't come with zuto zuto it comes with believe in my flesh and this is also the only place you can get that song and music video and when i tell you this is the best song that they have ever put out i love believe in my flesh so so much it's the exact kind of music i've always wanted to hear from them it's this hard like rock song and the the outfits are beautiful they're elegant they got great hairstyles and I just think the, the vocals on this track are amazing from everyone involved. You know, sometimes there'll be songs where like the vocals are kind of hit or miss. It's, to me, it's near perfect. Kaori gets to really let her voice out and the song is just beautiful. Just a pretty, pretty song. Now, one thing you'll notice about Believe In My Flesh in the music video is that they're not wearing their drivers in this video. And that's the main thing that I wanted to talk about with this release and why I said it marked a turning point for things to change. For one thing, Kaori would graduate from the group shortly after. I believe her last event, kind of sort of, her graduation event was the final release event for Super Best. And I love that she at least stuck through to the compilation album. That was so nice. You know, they, they didn't really film the graduation event, to my knowledge. Maybe someone did and it's just never been released. There are photos of it though. And Kamen Rider Kiva came out and congratulated her. It was this big thing. And of course she cried. <laughs> like, but. Yeah, she graduated, and this is the last release that she's featured on. Very bittersweet. Again, this is where I was getting into the group, so like, knowing that she was graduating right after I got into the group was kind of sad. You know, I had to go back to the backlog and see all the things she appeared in. And her being the leader, or not the leader, the, the, the lead vocalist, essentially, of Common Rider Girls for so long, it, it kind of hurt not hearing her in tracks afterwards, because you could hear how much force her voice added to the song, you know, how, how much she sort of led the songs a lot of the time. She would leave the group and start focusing more on her solo band, Chewing High, which I have all of their albums as well. If you want a video on that, I can absolutely do that. It's a wonderful band. They haven't been around lately, but like, it's a beautiful, beautiful band. I love her voice and I love the Kauri graduated, but also this is the final release that has them wearing their common Rider belts on a prominent release. They decided that they wanted to support all writers every year as opposed to just being relegated to one with like around their waist so i can kind of understand that we'll talk about that more so in the next era because that's when it really comes to a head but he told me basically said that they wanted to support all writers which i don't think was their decision i imagine that was probably something higher up and i also remember hearing that it could possibly have been a licensing issue you know bandai made all of these belts and especially a lot of these belts are old you know the oldest one in the group belt wise is blade which was like 2004 so they're going out to all these events and doing all these these concerts and stuff like that and they're wearing these rider belts you would imagine that bandai would want a cut from that 
at, at some point in some way. So you, you can imagine they're getting these belts licensed out each member individually every single time they go out to a concert and I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't want to pay that anymore. <laughs> Avex that is. So like from a business standpoint, I get it. I feel like a little bit of flair was lost when it comes to that. But I mean, what are you gonna do? Again, we'll talk more about that later. There are certain shots that you can find online of the girls wearing their rider belts with the Believe in My Flesh outfits on, which is very rare. I don't know why they didn't at least stick through to have those worn in the music video. I think that would have been a really good send off to those powers and it would have been really cool to see. Again, I don't know why they did a photo shoot wearing them and then they just decided not to wear them for the music video unless they did the photo shoot after. Who knows? This is me editing after the fact. I just noticed something like nine years after the fact. So I, ju I think I just mentioned that, you know, they're not wearing the rider belts at all in the Believe in My Flesh music video. I just noticed if you look at Shisato during this music video, you can see she's not wearing the belt. She's not wearing her wizard rings or anything because, you know, they had stripped it at this point. If you look at the section where they're revolving around this circular platform, if you look real close at one particular shot, she's wearing the flame ring and the engage ring. I don't know if she was wearing it for the entirety of this segment, but I, I just caught it and it just completely blew me away. So I, I don't know if she just forgot to take them off. Maybe this was like a pickup shot or something. I'm not sure. But like I that just that's just something that completely threw me off because I never noticed it. Chisato loves Wizard to this day, so it makes sense that she would try to include it at some point, even after the belts were stripped, stripped, and then, you know what I mean? Anyway, back to the video. But yeah, essentially, that is the super best album. It's a wonderfully put together album. Just amazing, hard hitting tracks from their history. Everything you could ever want from that time period is on this album. If you do end up getting a Common Rider Girls album, I would say either Alteration. <laughs> or super best most likely super best because you're gonna get the most for what you're paying for with that album it's just it's again it's very dear to my heart and i love 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 everything that's in it uh, that's pretty much it for this album again i'll be doing more eras i'll be doing the, the next era like 2016 through whatever i end up doing it through 2017 maybe and that should be a lot of fun too there's a lot i have to say about that era probably the most that i have to say in a lot of these videos uh, so Again, thank you guys for watching, and this has been a lot of fun. I love going through these nostalgia trips, you know, with you guys. There's a lot of things I haven't thought about in so long. Thank you guys for showing your support and your interest, as always. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and thank you guys so, so much for boarding my rainbow line. I'll see you guys at the next stop. See you! Hitchin! Alicia, Andrew, Austin, Autistic Disney, Brandon, Chaco, Emilia, Grim, Helen, Ian, Kira did nothing wrong, Junior the Hedgehog, Matthew, Prima Donna.